Good evening. First of all, uh, as you all know, a major loss to art community. As many of you know about the sad demise of renowned sculptor S. Nanda Gopal, died of a massive heart attack at his home at the Cholamandal village yesterday. Just to tell about him, born in 1946 in Bengaluru, Karnataka, one of the first set of artists to move into Cholamandal, a painter, metal worker, and a ceramist ceramist turned into a sculptor. The versatile artist is a recipient of National Award of Lalit Kala Academy and the Jindal Stainless Steel Award for Sculpture. Honored with senior fellowship by the Government of India, he was a, a physics graduate from Loyal College, Chennai, and completed a diploma in fine arts from the Government College of Arts and Craft, Chennai, in 1971. Most of his works uh, out of the frontal school and some of his larger pieces are displayed in museums as well as in public spaces. He is survived by his wife and daughter, sorry. Uh, beg your pardon. I now request all of you to stand up and uh, remain silent for a minute and pray for his soul to rest in peace. Thank you all. National Gallery of Modern Art, Bengaluru, Ministry of Culture, Government of India. Now is pleased to have this event today, the Artist Dialogue, organized as an outreach program in conjunction with the ongoing exhibition, Regional Modernity, the Madras Art Movement from 1960s to 1980s, curated by Ashrafi Bhagat. For today's evening, we have artists Srimati Anila Jacob, Sri Balanambiar, Sri Parvati Nair, Sri S. G. Vasudev, Srimati Ashrafi Bhagat, and uh, Mr. Ashwin Raj Gopal. I request, firstly, Anila Jacob to come on stage. And I request uh, Nivriti to welcome her. And I would request ma'am to take her seat. I request uh, Sri Balanambia to come on stage. I request uh, Nivriti to welcome him. Now request uh, Srimati Paruti Nair to come on stage. Welcome you, ma'am. I request uh, Sri S. G. Vasudev to come on stage. Now request uh, Mr. Ashwin Raj Gopal to come on stage. And finally, I request the curator, uh, Ashrafi Bhagat, to come and stage. I just request her. We had a wonderful uh, gallery walk with her, and most of the people you know, enjoyed it. I request the moderator to take over from here. Uh, I'm just going to stand while I address you, and then I will sit down when we start uh, talking. So uh, good evening. And all of you have been part of the walk a little earlier today that Ashafi did. How many of you weren't? No. OK, not too bad. So you guys can go and see it, and hopefully, uh, what we talk about has makes a little more sense to everybody else because you have a visual reference of what we're going to be discussing today. And um, 
Unfortunately, we don't have uh, visuals that are going to accompany this uh, discussion, but I will try and make it as uh, referential to the show as possible so that you can uh, put things together. Second question to the audience, how many of you are arts professionals in the arts, artists, so on and so forth? Okay, so we'll keep it more neutral. We'll, we'll keep it so that the non-art people can understand as well and doesn't become overly intellectual. And then, and, and I, I suppose it'll be a lot of fun uh, for the panelists as well to talk to you. Um, as a quick introduction, we're going to address the idea of the Madras modern or modernity in Madras or regional modernism um, as uh, the title says so. So what does that mean? What is regional modernity or regional modernism? Uh, I would step back one bit and say what is modernism and then to quickly sum it up uh, without getting into too much detail. Uh, it was everything that came after World War II, um, a period in time when artists were able to express beyond what was expected of the academic schools. There was a lot of freedom of expression. People were exploring. There was a lot of inquiry into what was happening in the world. Right? Uh, and particularly in India, we look at it post-independence. That is a period when we were also out of British rule and were able to move around question. And also, India was opening up in the 50s and 60s to a global world at that point. And it is at that point where a lot of the schools that we know, Madras, Bombay, and Calcutta, which were functioning at the time, uh, started to not become the primary institutions in the country. You started having things like Baroda come about. Uh, there was a lot, and then of course, the establishment of the Cholamandal Artists' Village. Uh, so there was this split, for ex or even a little earlier, if you talk about the Calcutta School and Shantiniketan, uh, there was this dual conversation that was happening. There were clearly voices uh, that were being heard and decisions being taken as to establish different ideas in art. It was not everybody doing the same thing. And here there were multiple departures. Several things were questioned. Some of them were spiritual in nature. Some of them were political in nature. Some of them were questioning the very process of creating art. Did it have to be academic? Did you have to paint landscapes? Did you have to paint, uh, you know, or were you just an abstractionist? The idea of abstraction itself comes about, becomes very popular in France in the 60s. You might have heard of people like Raza and uh, Padamsi who went to Paris, but you also had others from the Madras school. You had Akitam who went to Paris. You have Vasudev, sorry, uh, Vishwanathan who's been to Paris. And they are also indulging in this idea mm -hmm. of abstraction. And indigenously, even in India, at that time, you have people who are looking at Tantra for abstraction. So uh, you have Haridasan from the Madras school. You also have uh, Santosh, uh, Jaya Santosh, who's in Delhi, who's looking at it. You have people like Manjit Baba, who's come back into India and is starting to look at what is the idea of the spiritual, of what it is to be Indian. You have Raza, who came back later. So there's a lot of dialogue happening. Visuals are changing. So. Um, coming back to the Madras school, what was happening? You had multiple ideas that were blooming. You had multiple interactions, exchanges. There were a lot of departures. There were a lot of arrivals. And I think today's panel is very well distributed in that sense. So um, as a quick introduction uh, to each one of them, and, and probably they would, and I would request them to introduce their practices uh, to you uh, themselves. So, um, so Anila Ma'am, of course, uh, is a student of the college. Um, she is one of the few but early uh, students there who then moved into uh, Chola Mandal and started practicing uh, at the uh, artist village. Uh, she's a sculptor and probably shares a very unique uh, position amongst women artists who are sculptors uh, in India. Uh, there just aren't many or any. So. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, Mr. Balan Nambiar, who uh, was at the Madras school and uh, later went on, I suppose, to explore the spiritual uh, areas of ritualistic practices and, and looking at uh, Indian art um, in multiple mediums as well. And it was another interesting fact that, I mean, he, I mean he's a writer, he's a, he's a painter, he's an artist, 
Uh, some of my most fascinating pieces are the ones he works with enamel. It's, it's, they're like jewels, you know? So, so, th so the diverse application of his ideas. Then of course, uh, Mr. Vasudev, who uh, comes from Bangalore, uh, or, or Mysore, sorry, and, and then comes to the college, uh, is part of the very core formation of the Cholamandal artist village. He's there. I suppose most of your younger days were spent there with uh, the gatherings with Panikar and, and, and everybody talking and discussing. I've seen many photos of all of you sitting there in the beach and in circles. So it must have been a really fun time. New ideas, lots of new uh, you know, discussions going on. There's actually a group you know, of people, like-minded people talking. And again, then we come to Parvati, who is, is probably a generation uh, after everybody here, and has again come from Madras, has explored her practices both in Madras and abroad, and has come back and started looking at art. Of course, she's not a modernist in that sense, but from there she comes into what now is contemporary, and it is a very important step after modernism, is, is what we refer to as contemporary, very simple to understand is what's happening now, so tomorrow something else will be contemporary, but um, is, is practices that are happening today, and um, her practice is again very interesting, it goes into, away from what we know of a canvas and a sculpture, and goes into looking at very meditative practices, I think she looks, um, takes time to look at things, and in it finds form and abstraction, so uh, she can explain her work a little better than I can, and uh, I'm gonna pull Ashrafi into this because she's the uh, observer to all of this and I'm sure has her uh, uh, views about everybody in the historical uh, perspective. But um, anyway, I'm gonna just ask, request the panel to do a quick two, three minute introduction about what you do, what your practice is, and typically what is your idea in art so that everybody gets familiar with what you're doing and then we will start, we'll do a small session of questions, uh, we'll talk to each other, hopefully um, you know, engaging with the audience. We, we'll, we'll bring the audience in towards the end of the session, you guys can ask your questions, so it becomes a nice interactive session and, and we get to some good uh, information at the end of the day. So, shall we, yes, of course. Hello, good evening. Uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, many thanks to NGMA for having me and all the other panelists here this evening to have this wonderful interaction around this extremely important and thought provoking, you know, it's a thought provoking exhibition because it hasn't been, it's long overdue and all congratulations to Ashrafi to have done this and pulled it off and as a former student, you know, I would love, yes, for a round of applause for her. So, I mean, um, in terms of lineage, I graduated from Stella Maris, and then I spent a year at the government school, uh, you know, drawing there and painting there for, well, actually a year and a half. So, uh, in a sense, a sort of hybrid product in some way, and then I did my master's abroad. At the moment, the, um, the centrality of what I do is around the drawing practice. It sort of uh, it sort of hovers at that line between being real and abstract. In other words, I'm drawing the world. My work is not fantasy, but it's through different lenses of perception. So if I'm drawing landscape, I use found images sent back by NASA satellites. If I'm doing the body, I use images by scanning, tunneling, electron microscopes. If I'm drawing still life, I use images Im sent by these giant hadron colliders that looks at matter at its absolute basic level. So, um, you know, I mean, I think you can already see sort of lines of heritage in the line, in the dot. My work is, to say it in a very simplified way, there is an element of pointillism where I think the dot or the punctum or the point is you know the smallest indivisible particle and its endless iterations in a way create the world and it creates the world of my drawing. Um, I also expand the drawing practice into video, into installations, into photography and I will stop there because I'm sure there'll be other questions and other interactions and hand the mic over. <laughs> Thank you.
I started be, as, as a cartoonist, caricaturist, before joining the College of Art in Chennai, and um, came under the influence of KCS Panikkar and two of my teachers, whom I can't forget is Sartana Raj and Munuswami. Some of you people who have seen this gallery here, they must have seen their works. And uh, I was quite, uh, uh, you know, I was quite happy to be under them. Then uh, we started Chola Mandal in 1966, Chola Mandal Artist Village. Uh, basically, many people think that Chola Mandal is a school. It's not a school. It's an artist village mainly to make a living. So some of us artists, we experimented exp extending our art to craft. And uh, so Batik was one of the craft which we took up and then it proved successful for us. And uh, so we thought even if one worked for about two or three hours a day, it is enough for us to live on that and carry on doing our serious painting or sculpture. And so we wanted the space and we wanted to have to, to, to do the work and uh, uh, then we thought we should also live around. That's how we bought 10 acres of land on the sea coast going to Mahabalipuram, that coastal space. And then we created, we, we called it Chola Mandal. It is now 50 year old. Now, coming uh, to my own work, I was fortunate uh, to have these great teachers, including Panikkar. At the same time, I also had the occasion of meeting Girish Karnad who came to Chennai in 1963. And uh, being uh, two Kannadigas, we could speak a lot about our language. And uh, he exposed me to best of Kannada literature. And uh, he got exposed to a lot of good artwork. Anyway, so then I came across uh, one of the very finest poet, uh, Bendre, you know, D.R. Bendre in Dharwar, when I had a show in Dharwar in 1967. And uh, one of the poems of his, was, uh, you know, Kalpa Vriksha Vrindavana. That influenced my thinking. And then I went on doing a lot of paintings on that particular theme. In basically, my work is, you know, we were discussing in 60s uh, about what is Indian identity, what is, what is, how to make it contemporary worldwide. And uh, so this, all these three things which I, was, which I saw in people like Girish Karnad. In fact, he was writing Yati, Toglak, and all these uh, plays, which, taking the characters from uh, either myths or history. And so that also helped me to think in that direction. And uh, being uh, uh, you know, very fascinated by the Kannada uh, letters, alphabets, and things like that, I used them to create my own designs on my painting. Now, uh, then poetry, theater, and things like that have influenced me a lot. And my work are more or less based on those things. And um, uh, earlier it was, uh, uh, you know, I was influenced by the uh, Tree of Life theme. And then, uh, then I came to the Tree of Life and uh, then, I, uh, then I was exposed to humanscapes, then earthscapes, then theater of life. So this is the series I have done over the last uh, 50 years. And uh, I work in uh, mainly uh, my painting and drawing. Then I also do uh, uh, copper reliefs. I have uh, an assistant to work with me. And in the last 22 years, I've been working with a weaver, translating my painting to tapestry. My interest in the craft started way back in art school. The School of Arts was School of Arts and Crafts when I joined. So Panikkar had allowed us to go to any section one wanted to. And so one learned many things like enameling or ceramics or batik or whatever it is. And uh, so that helped me a lot to think that craft could be used in art very well. And uh, so that's how my interest in other crafts also have. And particularly tapestry, which I feel is a fantastic medium. And, uh, and so I've got a very good weaver with whom I have been working with all these years. And uh, so this is exactly what I'm doing right now. And uh, maybe later on some questions you can ask me. Thank you. Namaskar. Uh, 
I feel a little bit odd here because I am not a participant in the exhibition. Uh, my association with uh, uh, Madras is only for nine years in the art field. Four years as a student because I was directly admitted in the second year. So four years as a student in the College of Arts and five years I was a member of the Madras Art Club. Casey Spanikar introduced me to the Madras Art Club in 1962, so I was working elsewhere and employed in, um, in the railways. And so I was using actually the evening time, but all my energy, all my time, I spent in the art exhibitions almost every day, one exhibition or another. One thing I want to tell you, the, the most important period of Madras College of Arts in its history is between 1962 and 66. Uh, there were actually about 20 artists, all of them, almost all of them made name. And uh, Vasudev is one of them, Vishwanathan, Adi Moolam, K. Damodaran, uh, Haridasan, and Akitam Narayanan, who is a little bit, one or two years a senior to them. And from say 62, 60, 70, I can say. I passed out of the college in 1971, and this is the period also when Cholamandal was established. Incidentally, I am the person who plotted the land in the engineering drawing of, of Cholamandal. Uh, but I was not a member of Cholamandal. Originally, I thought of there, but I didn't want to continue because the, I can tell you, I can uh, confess the reason. For me, ACS Manikar was a banyan tree. I don't want to be a plant under that tree. So uh, that is one reason I left uh, Madras and came out of here. And when I joined the college, yes, Manikar has just, uh, it was only one year there when I joined there. But um, uh, when I really look back, I don't think I learned anything from any teacher in Madras College of Arts, except Panikar's help. Panikar was the one who taught, spotted my talent and encouraged me to, or rather, forced me or um, influenced me to leave a railway job to take art as a career. And I am grateful to him ever because he is a really strong influence on me. But that is one story. But as an artist, I came through my reading habit, my travel, my field work, and uh, research, then um, meeting intellectual at various level, writers, dancers, musicians, then um, uh, bureaucrats, some of the people, then scholars. Probably this influenced me to do the research, research on ritual performance of the West Coast of South India, and published about 18 research papers on that subject. But it has influenced to my creative work also. Sometimes I feel Janaki Ram was supposed to be my teacher but he was more of a friend to me. When I was in the railways, I was helping all the artists to send their work to different parts of India. And uh, through my contact, I was able to get their permission to send it by the train in which they are actually traveling. All these are actually. So Janikaram was a good friend of mine, except to KCS Panikar and Dhanapal and Krishna Rao, I never called any other teachers a sir, because they were all my friends. And they were actually very helpful to me but not as a teacher. You know, I, don't, I think I learned about making mold from the molder Topal than actually the teacher. But one of the reasons why I joined the college, I really I would tell you, the fees of the college at that time was 36 rupees, the annual fees. We get fantastic facilities there. Studios are at your disposal. Nobody is going to interfere. You can do whatever you want and you follow certain syllabus, then you can actually uh, for, you continue the study. There is an art history uh, session about one and a half hours a week. In all my four years, I attended only half the lecture uh, class. I thought, um, I thought I knew about art history better than the teacher. So I had an understanding with the teacher. I told them I will sit for the examination. I will actually, you know, uh, Follow that, but please forgive me. I don't want to attend the class. Reluctantly, I was allowed, or rather, 
I was given permission. But later, some other students tried to make problems, which uh, somehow it is missed out. But I am quite familiar with the art history, probably fairly well, and I can actually even write or give lectures or whatever it is. So that is actually. Then subject of my uh, painting was actually entirely mine. I never actually followed the teacher's instruction to do my work. Uh, sketching I was good, uh, clay modeling I was very good. Then I started doing my own work. In fact, uh, incidentally, my second first year, I mean first year is a foundation course. The second year actually, because I joined the f uh, second year of the foundation course, so that is my first year. But the sculpture I made in the second year is now Madras Museum. <coughs> The first sculpture I sold was actually my third sculpture I ever made in my life. That is actually in Germany. So I was actually like a duck in a uh, water when I started doing <coughs> sculpture. So my subject was first influenced by the ritual performances. Later, most of my sculptures were more influenced by mathematic principles and uh, symbolism associated with the rituals. Late, very recent works are actually highly influenced by mathematics. Golden ratio, Fibonacci numbers, fractals, and principles associated with the tantric and its um, um, you know, symbolism as well as mathematical principles. So this is how I actually came out or continued. So my association is actually, as I said in the very beginning, is nine years in Madras. And uh, we, there is another thing I want to tell you about is this exhibition is a cross section. It highlights about that period, but it is not actually entire Madras. There are many prominent artists missing in this exhibition. Vasudha Sathurur, uh, Walsan Kaleri, then um, there are actually many few other artists, uh, Bala Subramaniam. These are prominent artists in the national level. They are actually missing in the exhibition. I don't, I don't want to say that I, my works are not there. It doesn't matter because my work is actually in the garden here. So uh, that is a, <coughs> the, uh, you know, the, the actually there is, I would actually say it is uh, conducted uh, in such a way, in a hurriedly composed, uh, uh, compiled exhibits and uh, it's uh, actually, a, there is no question of, there is no style or Madras style. There is no, actually, there are many artists, if you look at uh, Vishwanathan's painting, it has nothing to do with Madras. Or Akhita Narayan's painting, it has nothing to do with Madras style. There is no Madras style, really. It is only a, really a, a, a just a, a nomenclature which is used by art critics. And uh, we have to, again, when you look at it, you have to look at the art. Individuals are there. There are. And, uh, uh, but they are actually at the different levels, different areas. Okay, next. I will get another chance. Good evening. I'm so sorry, you know, I can't speak very well. Any language. <laughs> I can show my pads to my sculptor. Uh, I'm a student of uh, student from Madras College of Arts, and Mr. K. C. Swamikar and Pandit Danapal. I learned sculpturing, and I, and I did five three years course, and I finished my course. I start doing my self, you know, my own way of doing sculpturing. At first, I was doing met, uh, wood, wood sculpture. Slowly I came to metal and wood. And uh, now I am doing granite also, granite and metal. And uh, I think because of atrophy and posture and fear. So she talks about me more than. <laughs> Thank you so much. those uh, quick introductions uh, and I'm going to use um, Ashrafi to speak a little bit about uh, 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 an interesting, uh, at least I find interesting actually uh, um, the way Mr. Vasudev spoke about uh, 
his mentors and the way Mr. Balnam has spoken about his uh, learning in the school. So the idea of learning, um, what does one go to an institution and take away from it as an artist and as a teacher, as eventually most artists become teachers, teachers in the sense not that you go and physically take classes, but in the sense that your work then inspires another generation, creates another dialogue, and then there is a continuity from there. So how do you, and I, maybe it's a two-part question, and, and you can answer it uh, how you'd like. So, and, and I think I would like Ashafi to start with that as your experience as a teacher, uh, as somebody who is, uh, who has influenced many generations of uh, students. What is the importance in the Madras school? Because you always hear, you know, with, with very great admiration, uh, the idea of, I mean, if you're an older artist, you hear Roy Chowdhury and Panika. Mm -hmm. If you're the next uh, current generation of the mo moderns, you hear of Santan Raj and Munswami, and then, you know, so and then the current generation speaks of maybe Bhaskaran and Alfonso. So what is that that these artists, practicing artists and teachers bring to the practice of art, right? And I, I would like Mr. Balanambe to talk a little bit more about why you think that it was that you weren't learning from the teacher, so to say, in that sense, and, and how you've evolved uh, your own practices, the imagery, and yes, if you look at your visual imagery of your artwork, it is a departure from what one normally associates with modernism that comes from either the Madras school or that remains in the south, right? which is uh, not affected, so to say, by uh, the Bombay school or what we're looking at is that is happening in Delhi. So both, both the process of learning and unlearning and how uh, teaching and, and, and learning is a very important part of, yeah. Oh, no, but you're, of course, but in, in, in the point of view of, uh, of what academics bring, idea of an artist. I don't know how to answer this. Because uh, if I have to take uh, my life as a teacher, and if uh, I have to compare it with the College of uh, Arts and Crafts, there's a, there are two polarities, basically. Uh, as a teacher in college, of course, my interest was more art history, and uh, I was more interested in design. And uh, for me, it was very important that any practical subject which was done should have a theoretical component to reinforce that, you know, how intellectual thinking is very, very important in creativity. I mean, that was uh, what I learned over the years when I read the masters and when I read, uh, you know, history of uh, the biography of many of the artists. Uh, so that for me was the driving point, whatever it was. And my interest was mainly in design. And of course, art history from ancient to modern to contemporary. Now, uh, if you're talking of, uh, you know, artist teachers like uh, Alfonso and uh, Bhaskaran, Yes, these two teachers, you know, from what I've heard from the artists, uh, they were teachers who were very insightful, like Panika also was very insightful, you know, who could, and he could spot talent where it was. Uh, Alfonso, I can give you a point of uh, one particular artist, V.V. Ramani, who is a collage artist. He turned to collage because of his teacher, Alfonso. Oh, okay, just... So uh, Alfonso was a teacher, and in his class, Ramani didn't have paints. So he says, I don't have paints, I don't have any drawing material, what do I do? So Alfonso says, you don't have to have paint materials and all those, you know, uh, various things to create a work of art. And, you know, he took a few papers and says, create work out of this. So those papers, you know, which were given to him, newspapers, he created work out of that and it fascinated him so much that he actually became a collage artist. He does nothing but collages today. So, you know, this is the kind of influence of a teacher. 
subconsciously which registers and it is very very important when the teacher gives the particular attention to a particular student at that right moment in the life of a student then the bhaskaran also it's the same thing there are many uh, artists you know who have said that bhaskaran could uh, you know pick out talents he knew where the talent was and uh, he would give that extra push to the students and you know make them work in a different direction as a student all of us have gone through this that when a teacher pays a little attention to us you know where the morale goes for the student and uh, especially in art this is what i discovered as a teacher that it is very important to pick out a student who is not doing well and just give a little push and i find that uh, i found that you know it made a tremendous difference to them so teacher whether as an artist or as an artist teacher it makes a huge difference in their approach and their attitude towards their students so and i'm for sure that it was the same in the college of uh, arts and crafts where you know panika led the way and there were you know uh, many uh, artists uh, teachers like santana raj munuswami uh, many artists have also spoken about santana raj and munuswami in different ways Santan Raj was very very extrovert and you know when he would see a good work of art he would do a little dance in front of that canvas and make the students so happy whereas Bunu Swami will take his stick you know make a pointer somewhere put his head down and walk away i mean these are stories which have come from the artists who were students of Bunu Swami and Santan Raj and they say that you know what a difference Santan Raj made to their life and what a difference Bunu Swami made to their life same way with dp roy choudhury and kcs panikar also you know one word from them or a nod from them was enough to make their day so yes teachers and teacher artists do make a whole uh, you know world of difference either you get influenced or you don't get influenced and you know it defines your life in many ways on the same lines yeah yeah um do one uh, said that uh, they had one wonderful teachers in the college at that time panikar was not directly teaching any of us he was he was working in his studio and um, fortunately you know he had allowed me to use the studios this the classroom studio to work any time the night or day so i would work till about 10:30 11 11:30 in the night there then he was staying in the same campus so if he saw the light in the studio in the classroom he would walk there then sit and talk about the work which i was doing and he would invite me to his studio in the morning at 6:30 this painting and then i would go there the relationship between us was like a guru and shishya it's not only as a in the college as a teacher and uh, in the classroom no nothing of that sort in fact uh, we a group of us we went to baroda in 1964 or 64 i don't remember exactly and there was a discussion and uh, panikar also was heading us at that time then um, subramanian kej subramanian mas panikar now i would like to know what sort of a teaching is there in your school because i don't see your students working like you each one is different how is it how is it happening how is it it's happening then panikar said i won't answer this question any student can answer this question so i raised my hand and i said there is no teaching in the college there is no teaching in the college we have learned everything ourselves but in our classrooms santana raj would be painting munuswami would be painting and panikar was painting in the studios we are allowed to walk anywhere seniors doing in these scholars room painting and so you know we learned a lot from these people discussions would take place between us that's that's how one learned and so the madras i said the madras school of art either produced good artists or bad artists there are no mediocre artists 
This is exactly what has happened in Chennai. There are no mediocre artists. If at all, there are good artists. Now, this is what I felt about education there and Panikar later on also. And uh, I do, I sorry, to, I disagree with Bala uh, Nambiar that Panikar was never a banyan tree. In fact, he was part of the tree and all of us were put together, we were banyan tree. You know, he never considered himself as a banyan tree under which nobody could grow. And uh, so that's, that's my way of thinking. And even in Cholamandal, when we were living there, he would walk into the room at 6.30, 7 in the morning, he would knock the door and say, hey, I would like to see what you're painting now. This is the way he interacted with artists. He never considered us as students. He always considered us as artists, artist to artist discussions. And um, so that made a lot of difference. And I, I in fact, uh, 1964 to 66, I got national scholarship. And then the government of India asked me, which institution you want to go and work. I said, Vitras College of Art. Then I worked under Panikkar. And 1966, when I wanted ex you know, extension of scholarship, no, 1965, when I wanted extension of scholarship, I was interviewed by Manisar, Sanya, and Bendre at, in, in Bombay. So I was the only person selected in 1964, but I had to go to, for an extension to Bombay, and then, Mani sir asked me, now that you have worked under Panikar for uh, all these years, why don't you come to Baroda and study there? I said, no sir, I want to study under Panikar for two more years. I, because I felt that need to sort of, a, the discussion which we were having between us had to sort of a, make it more concrete. It's not like just, you know, doing something and going away. So Panikar was very particular about that and uh, he, 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 if at all he liked somebody's work, the classroom work, he would take it home. He would take it home and show it to his wife and his children and discuss that work and call this artist home. You know, these sort of things he was doing. And that made a lot of difference to all of us. And uh, another thing about uh, in the college is they never would talk about the bad part in a painting. If at all a painting was there, whether it's Santana Raj or Munuswami, anybody, they would only say what is good in the painting. What is good in the painting. That, that made us realize what, how we should progress from there. So this is where I saw the teacher-student relationship. And um, next question, any right now? Yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> The problem in uh, art institutions in India, all cultural institutions I can say, and I can say this in a fairly an authoritative way because I have done a lot of study and survey in all India art institutions, cultural institutions. One of the worst things happened all through the history last for at least two years is uh, appointing the former student as a teacher in the same institution immediately after graduation. In this process, most of our institutions are really ended up with the inbreeding. This happened to Madras College of Arts. It happened to uh, uh, Kalakshetra. It has happened to uh, JJ School of Arts, even in Baroda. The former students, immediately after graduation, are appointed as a teacher. So recently, I am one of the actually co-chair in a survey or in a committee who is doing a research and a report, I was supposed to give a report, already submitted the report. Uh, I made this as a very strong point. No student who studied in the same institution should be appointed as a teacher of the same institution within 10 years from the graduation. This was one of my strong uh, recommendation. You know, when we are, if you want really a good teacher, we need fresh talent, fresh teachers. When I was in the college, Madras College of Arts, uh, I couldn't get any new knowledge. In the sculpture department, it was zero. Janagram is a good person, very good friend. In fact, he helped me in a very big, very special way. And last year of my course in Madras College of Arts, for five months, I was working in the metallurgy department of IIT Madras 
learning broadcasting welding and you know this aluminum welding and st normal steel welding and ganigram was actually gracious enough to give me special permission he was giving attendance in the college registrar but i was allowed to work in the iit madras for five for five months and that has helped me a lot because as you probably some of you might know i do painting and drawing that is on one side then i do jewelry and armor on copper and silver and gold and then um, sculptures i did many uh, cement bronze normal steel and stone and last 16 years i have been doing only stainless steel sculptures all this actually was actually uh, it happened because of one five months course or five months internship i am using the word quoted in quotation in the at iit madras see my teachers are good i mean uh, there are really good i still remember when i was learning in the patras art club in the evening class panikar came and uh, ex explained about using oil color he is a good he is a good teacher and there are individually there are other people uh, teacher but somehow collectively if i say madras college of arts didn't have a good teachers after that generation of uh, um, sandar raj and munswami as even now it is hopeless it's a disastrously hopeless because there are no good teachers and the same thing happened to jj school of arts in even baroda former students are appointed as a teacher many institutions if you make survey all the culture institutes not only painting and sculpture but also performing arts this is happening in india so uh, as far as a teacher is concerned teachers influences of gurugula system is our tradition we can actually do lot but that's and i'm going to take off from that note and look at another uh, i i'm i hope this was insightful because uh, there are two points of view which is one on on how our teachers allow you to grow and another angle where an artist wants to have learning but doesn't find it in the immediate Uh, institution so something to think about so from there i want uh, to depart uh, on a small point that you said uh, i do understand where you're coming from with the idea that um institutions are built within the institution uh, and therefore it does uh, create issues so i want to talk about a small now we'll we'll talk politics because there is uh, politics in art and i think in a way all artists are politicians because they want their point of view heard they want and their point of view is the only point so um at the college at the where 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 madras uh, art movement uh, exists in the 60s there was a period of time where there was the government at that time who came and said no principal can be there for more than 4 years and the principals had to be i think they had to finish a year a, a, a period of being a principal at the kumbakonam college and then they could become principals in the madras school and it was around that time i think the first i suppose visible uh, you know signs that there was some kind of a partition in ideas right so you have the cholamandal school you have or, or rather the ideology behind cholamandal and everything that came uh, with it and then you have the um other artists who were there through the college who were creating their own identity who were coming in through a uh, certain I, I, at that time wouldn't say political back but were coming in through certain uh, political identities regional identities within the madras school so i mean uh, any of you can take this question um but what do you see politics playing a role both in terms of education and art as well as the current situation or as a way of expressing your thoughts as well where is there a politician in you is there politics in your art and and do you see uh, education of art being politicized question because i don't think i'm qualified i wasn't there at the, the time that you're talking about but you know pedagogy is a very complex thing in terms of 
in, when you're doing art at, at the basic level, there is skill sets that you need to learn. And I think that's something that's true of you know, the Madras school or, or Indian art in some way that craft and art are not sort of divorced in the way that they are sometimes in Western art. So certainly as a student of Chennai, in Chennai or in Madras at the time, first at Stella Maris and then at the government school of arts, I was very grateful to learn technique and to learn skill, though, um, because I'm someone who still believes in that, in, in, in the notion of the two not being two separate parts. But there is also then a process where, where teachers teach you, and then a process where teachers leave you alone, where you are thrown in the deep end and said, we're not gonna hold your hand anymore. It's time that you went out and we give you a framework, and within that framework, you go and read, and you go and experiment, and you go and learn. And I think that process is very important as well, because um, otherwise you just become a clone of the person teaching you. So, you know, uh, both in Chennai and then later on in London, you know, I won a scholarship and I went to St. Martin's, where, um, you know, it was important to learn this language, a, a certain language of art, and also to be told that right now you go and figure out what it is that you want to do. But what I would argue is that that was only possible because a certain basic skill set was learned. That, you know, I mean, uh, I know that this is an old debate, but still I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, if you're a writer, you are expected to string two sentences together and string them together well. So as an artist, I feel that there is a certain skill set that you need to be able to bring to the table. It's something that you can riff off. It's, you know, you, you can't rebel against something if there is nothing to rebel against. So I think in that sense, pedagogy, in what I got out of both experiences in Chennai was very important to me. But it didn't end there. It was a stepping stone, but it, it gave me a foundation with which to move on to other things. I mean, all art is personal, of course. There isn't any such thing as a Madras style, I don't think. Uh, and uh, I think some of the, the learnings that we've had, I think artists are also engaged in the process of osmosis. So, you know, um, in a way, my art will continue that debate of what is Indian in my art. It, it's not obviously or in, in any way Indian, but I don't feel, I feel liberated. I don't feel... The, that, that, that sense that it's got to tick certain boxes. But there is a process of osmosis. I feel, you know, that there is an inheritance of a sense of line. There is an inheritance of a sense of detailing, of being able to imbibe from the place that I lived in and I grew up in, almost by osmosis, not by uh, an organic process, not this process of today I will decide that I take this from this and this from this, which is sometimes what artists do. But I feel that um, as, say the, say, the contemporary generation, I mean, modernism was both a moment in history and an art period. And I think increasingly, there is this room for regional modernity. I mean, from when I was in Singapore to when I'm here, it's, not, it's no longer a homogenous term inherited from the West. And I think that's why exhibitions such as this are important to reinvent and relook at what modernity meant the place that you lived and worked in. And then to, um, to be historically informed and then to work as a contemporary artist in that space. In that sense, I feel the history and the, um, the thinking and the, con the, uh, you know, the conceptual thinking of that place are important as something that you build on. So I'm not sure I answer your political question, but I hope to some degree I answer that, that need for pedagogy and the need for learning that I found very important when I was uh, He just asked, uh, you know, made a comment about the art, politics in art. See, it is also associated with the association of art too. Fortunately, from 1962 onwards till now, I don't belong to any art organization. I never been a member of uh, any organization, so I never got politics. But uh, I know when Panikar was there, we had uh, three organizations: the college, Progressive Painters Association, South Indian Society of 
this n changes are n changes okay there was never an n panikar decided who is the president who is the secretary and who is the member who is the treasurer etc etc and there are some you know there are three type of one, one is actually who want to be leader of art and another is actually who want to be a member of an third is like me i don't want to be the either of and uh, there are some you know vasudev is one of the most efficient head of uh, organization all through from student days he was either secretary or vice president president whatever it is and uh, he was always excellent but there are some people who want to be only a member in the organization and but people like me who never want to be either a member or a chair except the last uh, four years is to a second academy i never been actually in any organization as or even i okay i am a life member of craft council i am life member of theater group i am life member of many other organizations but not as a group of political or member see this is a very important act one um, problem the madras college when padikar was here he never resent actually agreed to dissent you never tolerate dissent once you dissent that man is eliminated in the group he will never be actually Uh, he has a very good admiration for many other artists but in you know, the victims are actually like a kanai kujiraman the damodaran and i never had an occasion to argue with him there is another occasion but uh, he was always affectionate to me from very beginning but on a one occasion he had some res- uh, resentment about me that is another story but is <coughs> but uh, i have a highest admiration him as a teacher greatest quality of gss panikar is he has an exceptional ability to spot the talent merit of a new student that's exceptional it's superb i have not come across that kind of ability in any or any individual in it same way in malayalam writer we will say m govindan has that kind of uh, you know ability he spot and he encourage he encourage but where it actually if the candidate or student he resent his any comment disaster he will be really nowhere in the picture anymore and i know from experience who are the artists who are with must or who parted company with them with the, the group but that it happened this is what i would say politic but when you have to look at this i am actually for that rather there is a politics than not having any argument or anything i justify that politics is good we need a difference of opinion we need a difference of um, attitude and but uh, these are part of it but tolerate people who are like me who is actually non political and never been actually in a group till this day yeah i too had my differences with panikkar i used to argue it out and uh, we used to meet almost every alternate day you know from volleyball to home in the evenings and he would ask me what do you have to drink i said i have got some rum and he would come and he would sit and have rum and have arguments and his wife also would join next day morning he would come and say i think what i said yesterday was wrong namu told me it was not correct he would apologize he would not carry it never carried this sort of thing that's one my experience banan and the other thing is about politics you don't have to be an artist to be a politician every one of you is a politician here and one person will have two politicians in them some of them so i and 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 it is and it's the ego which is really creating the problem not anything else now regarding the uh, if i want to say something about uh, you were sorry, you were talking about uh, principles and four years here and there and um, i was part of this thing which when we started cholamandal artists village in 1966 
you know, quite a few of people like Bhaskaran, Adi Mulam, Dakshana Murti, they were all part of it. They were all part of it. And then there was a problem when Panikkar retired and um, he was reinstated, he was asked by the government to get back because superannuation had changed by that time. And so there was a problem. The next person was Mr. Dhanapal and he thought he should be sitting on that chair. So DMK came to power at that time. Congress was out, DMK came to power. And then slowly, some of these people used Tamil, anti-Tamil feelings. That was the worst thing which could happen in Chennai. And friends, we have eaten the same plate and gone together everywhere. They became enemies. They said, I'm a Tamil, you're a Malayali, you're this one. I said, amongst artists, what sort of a difference is this? We have all, I told Bhaskaran, who was my classmate, very close classmate, a friend of mine. I told him, look, we have started Chola Mandal. It's to, to be together, to carry on. Our life is in Chola Mandal now. So why should we bother about all these sort of politics? He said, no, 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 no. So no. As far as this Tamil culture is concerned, I mean, this sort of a feeling was brought in, unfortunate. So they divided Chola Mandal. But I must say so that there is no Chola Mandal school. You said something like that. And uh, I don't think all the artists in Chola Mandal who are working, they're all alike. Each one have their own way of doing things. Haridasan was different, Vishwanathan is different, Akitam is different, Anila is different, I am different. I mean, see, we, we, we started Chola Mandal mainly to make a living, not, not to create a school, not to create one, one movement in art, nothing of that sort. So, and it is successful in the sense and I remember very well, 1967, when Panikar was interviewed by some journalists in, in Chennai, two, two questions he answered. One is, he was asked, how long is this, how, how many artists, uh, you know, now that you have got about 20, 25 artists, do you think all of them uh, will be very successful? He said, no, it's an experiment. Even if five, six out of these 20, 25 succeed, it's a great success for us. And then, what about the longevity of the artist village? He said, one generation. I do not know about next generation. Artist children may not like to be, may not be artists or they may not like to stay in this village or they may like to sell the place and go away. So, both have succeeded. Cholamandal, many people think that, people say, oh, people are selling their land and going away. Well, you can't help it. It's a one generation and we have all been, we have done it, it's an experiment. A great experiment at that point of time. Today, a lot of my artist colleagues here in Bangalore, they say, why don't you start a Chola Mandal here? Because they know the problems they're facing today. No sales of painting or sculpture. So you people sorted out all these sort of problems in 60s. Why don't you start something like that here? I said, a group of you come together, you can start. You don't need any one of us to help you. You can start yourself. Now, that is the situation we are in, and um, um, so as I said, uh, it's ego, not politics, and uh, even art, art organizations, I think uh, Balan has a point of view, but my point is this, that any art organization has to be built. It's not that easy to build. And um, if Cholamandal has gone about without any help from any source, no government grants or anything, till today, 50 years, it has gone about. Is it, is it, it's an organization, it's an organization which carries the whole thing. There are artists who are working towards organization, they're doing some work, each one of them, whatever they could, they, they put in some time to do the things and then it, it goes on. How, how, can, how can you do anything without an organization? And, and you need to know how to, how to sort out the problems of an organization. And, and, and Panikar, another thing which I said is, since Panikar was a towering personality himself, 
He was not just a painter, but he could also talk very well. He was a very intellectual. And so many people at that time couldn't come to his level. So naturally, he was asked to be the head of the institutions. And he went on like that. And even Cholamandal, when he, he was president for a few years first, and then he said, I don't want to be a president anymore. Then we requested him, please be there as, at, till your life. So he was president. But he allowed all of us to do whatever we wanted. He said, make mistakes, it's okay, but you will learn in the process. And I learned a lot of things from him from 1962 onwards. And I, 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 you know, I, that, that's one of the things which I makes me feel that I can organize things. But organizing is very important, you know, to, 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 to understand each other's problems and to understand artists' problems. And if you, if you don't have that sort of a organization capacity, you can't run the things, organizations. And you can be individuals, very easy to be individual, you know, without any uh, problem. I can, I can just paint at home, I can sell my paintings and can carry on. I don't need organizations to help me. But don't you think it's responsibility of each one of us to, as artists community, to be responsible to organizations, to run the organizations, and show to the society that we can do things. If, if half a dozen artists didn't come together, we couldn't have, couldn't have got this place, National Gallery of Modern Art. Today I'm telling you, when, when we didn't have National Gallery of Modern Art, it is just half a dozen artists in Bangalore. We put together our brains. We had a press conference. We said we want a building for NGMA. We demanded it. We got this place. Individual couldn't have done it. It's an organization. It's very important. And so I think, I think uh, uh, that, that's what, that's what makes me you know, work with organizations even today. I'm, I'm, I'm one, one thing is that one should uh, give complete freedom to the generation of artists. You should not hold on. You can give the freedom and then it works very well. I just add a small refinement that I said when I said you know, I agree there isn't such a thing as a Chodramandal style or a Madras style. What I meant by that is that I don't see it in a reductive sense, in a, in a, in, but in the sense of when you look at the show, you do see threads running through. And I think those threads are interesting, whether it is, you know, a certain sense of philosophy, a certain sense of engagement with craft, a certain sense of playing with the line. These are, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't, reduce it or be reductive about it, call it a style, but there are elements which hold it together as a school. And I think for a next generation of artists, looking back, seeing that is interesting. So I just wanted to make that small refinement. Uh, thank you. I think it's been uh, fairly insightful. I hope it has been as well. Um, we'll take a few questions from the audience. I'm sure you can, you can directed to anybody here, so we'd be happy to uh, answer your question. I'm sure it can be a little bit about what you've seen at the exhibit as well, um, and I should be answer some of that. No, they, 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 can I ask a question? I'm directing this to Ashrafi. Because uh, Balan, in his, uh, you know, when he said that uh, he doesn't feel that this, is, this exhibition, uh, uh, you know, you could have included some other artists who are important. And uh, I just want to know from you whether you feel that you have missed out or you could have done more justice. I just want to ask you this. Actually, I have defined a time period. It says 60s to 80s. And I also made it very clear in the book which has been brought out that I speak only about the core artists who were responsible 
for defining this along with Panika. And uh, you know, it's not possible to take all because I've done my research and there's something called the review of the literature. And when I was doing that, I found you know, certain names were being constantly thrown up, which meant that you know, these were the artists who have played a seminal role in defining the contours of the Madras art movement. And uh, certain artists could not be included at all, like Walsan Koleri, uh, I don't think lived in Chennai, he went away to Baroda. Walsan Koleri, however, was never on the scene. So uh, I didn't even think about Walsan Koleri. And then there is a few artists, uh, you know, which uh, I felt could not belong here for certain reason. There were certain artists whom I included uh, because they had certain affiliations, you know, uh, and these were the artists who were actually in the woods and, you know, they have been, they were brought out in the last uh, 10 uh, years or so. And uh, keeping that in mind, that is how, you know, I curated the whole show. It was impossible to put all the artists. These are questions which are coming to me. But as a researcher, I know, you know, what I have done and uh, the kind of, I have done it very objectively. There's no subjectivity because I don't know any artist and I have never worked with anyone, one of them. I've only looked at work of art and then, you know, I've defined my threads of connectivity and how, you know, one particular ideology has helped in, you know, defining it as regional. So basically that way, you know, the, uh, many artists have written me emails saying, how come this artist has been left out, that artist has been left out. Well, I know exactly what I have done. I know the kind of research I have done. And I know the artist to whom I have spoken to in the five years that I did my research. So uh, with confidence, I can say that what I have put up is, the, is with conviction and without any partiality or any of those things. I have never brought in those aspects into it at all because it no way it comes into it. Neither my emotions, nor my subjectivity, nor my closeness or proximity to with any of the artists to say, okay, I will take you and I will not. So this is very, very objectively done and, uh, and I know exactly what I have done. I want to ask uh, Mrs. Bhagat uh, one question. If you are asked to do another second edition of uh, Regional Modernity from 1980 to present day, 27 years, how many artists you can actually find in this region, the same region? In, as a Madras art movement? Yes. No, they will not, not be. No, they, no, regional modernity stops here. It stops here. There's no something like, you know, going beyond 80s. Just this morning, you know, we were having a conversation in the train and she was saying now there has to be, I was also thinking and she also voiced it, post with a dash, you know, uh, Madras art movement. So that dash is very, very, it has a lot of energy there, which will say, you know, what is that dash and then the Madras art movement, that post. Actually, it is the contemporary, you know, artists who now should be considered after this movement and in what direction they have gone in the 90s. So what defined the 60s, what defined the 70s, what defined the 80s, and then the 90s, why the artists who, you know, came up were so very different. I think it's, I agree with her. Uh, we have to really look at this art, Madras scene or any other art scene. See, I joined the college of and uh, see, if you take uh, the post-independence period, and that's, that is the period, 40 students are admitted uh, during the year at the time, 40 or 50 at the time. Even if it is 50, post-independence period, if you take uh, 50 students a year, 50 into 50, 2,200 students, uh, students, students, uh, uh, 2,500 students that have actually gone to college. Okay. Then, if you look at it, every year, uh, 8 to 10 students get painting, trade art, and sculpture. When I was a student, there were only 3 students. That's another story. But only less than 3 students. That doesn't mean a second class student actually is not actually. Ramanujam didn't get 
The S. P. Ramaswamy, who was a painter, who got a British Council scholarship and other thing, he was he didn't get first uh, first class. There are exceptions, but if you take it, ten students per year with a marriage, fifty into ten, five hundred students should have been in the last fifty years. How many are there in practical side? I would say not even fifty students. That means ten percentage, not even sometimes a ten percent. It is bound to happen. That natural filtration is going to happen in art field. You get only the very selected people remain, uh, say beyond a generation. Once I asked Ashok Mitran, a Tamil writer, when he came for lunch at my house, I asked him, "How do you judge a work of art, or work of book, a book?" He said very beautifully and very innocently, he said, "If a book." Is reprinted even after 25 years. If the book is actually quoted after 25 years, if that book is remembered after 25 years, he said that actually has merit. I will apply the same yardstick to painting and sculptures. If you can remember that sculpture or painting even after 25 years, I'm not cal calculating that exactly 25 years. Say a generation, I would say that work has merit. So this, uh, otherwise, I remember reading a um, famous book, uh, article called Book by a, um, a, a British author long ago. He classified books in two categories. One, which is actually for time being, it is something like a um, long article. It is compiled as a book, like a travelogue or a biography sometimes. Then there are books which live beyond Book, uh, uh, books uh, which live beyond the generations. That means uh, it may even live two, three generations, but Shakespeare and Kalidas and other people live ever. Same thing happened to painting and sculpture also. Some paintings are remembered only for a generation. Some people, are, uh, some paintings are, they, they just, you know, nowadays you get this, quite a lot of immature artists get fantastic uh, publicity in newspaper. In, and that is only for one or two days. Or then next year, you may not even remember the artist. But same thing is going to happen in art also. But in this exhibition, there are masterpieces. There are some of the best work. Fortunately for me, at least about 20 works done, exhibited here, I have seen the artist painting, including the painting which he, Vasudev did, that Vindavan uh, uh, was this, Bandre's painting. I, and particles painting, I was actually watching. This is actually the learning process, not from only teachers. You see, learn from the teachers working, and learn from the students or colleagues or classmates working, then you learn from that. Teachers, unfortunately, in Madras College is zero. Uh, after that generation, which I meant, uh, mentioned earlier. Okay. Actually, there were so many questions I'd like to ask. One I have noticed. Uh, one I have noticed is most of you joined art not in the foundation year. You didn't do a five-year program. Yeah. Did you? Did uh, were you, were you there right through for five years, or did you join? You joined in the second year. You mentioned right. No. Six years program. You did the six-year program. The right yeah. through. Right. And. You also, Anila? Okay, right. I felt that all of you uh, maybe have been uh, sort of, I realized at that period of time, art, they felt there was no money or a profession. So parents won't encourage children to join an art school. It was also a diploma. It was not a degree. They felt they should have a degree. And uh, did all that affect you in your personal life? Uh, I mean, in your choices when you went to art school, uh, parental influence, yeah. and, you know, yeah, yeah, societal yeah. influence. And I agree, I agree. I, I, I understand what you're saying. And um, it's, it's because one wanted to, one wanted to learn art, one wanted to be in an atmosphere in an art school, one, one had to force oneself and go there. Because, you know, it's, a, it's the parents, they had to say yes to it. Of course, you know, it took some time for them to realize the seriousness of, their children, what they were doing in the art schools. And um, I, think, I think it's a passion, you know, for a, 
for a youngster, a passion to, to get into art. I mean, it's not anything, it's not like it's any profession. It's a, it's a passion. If you have that passion, profession comes later on, you know, and uh, money and everything. It's not, that's not, that's not the thing which one thinks of even. Even when I joined the college, I never had much money. But anyway, I worked. I worked, went to some of these places and did illustrations, book jackets and everything to make little money to buy my color and canvas. I did that. And then I got national scholarship. I had enough money to throw for all these things. So, but it, it all depends on uh, uh, you know in individuals. But if you have passion, you have to you can go through the, all these things. And whether it's six years course or eight years course, it doesn't matter. In fact, I would I would I would prefer even eight years in a college because there is such a lot of atmosphere. You know, beautiful atmosphere to work with, seeing seniors artists working, senior teachers working and you know interaction and things like that it's a heaven you know really it's a heaven uh, i will i mean you may have you may have had to uh, sort of uh, um, sort of you may have had to force your parents to realize your passion for you to have reached where you reached no, the college over there no. because all of you some of you joined later the college means you had, it took longer for you to convince your parents that this is really what you want to do. I don't tell it. Yeah, yeah tell it. No, the thing is that even, even it took some time for me to realize <laughs> I could join an art school uh, because I, unfortunately, I had to do physics, chemistry, mathematics which was a boring subject for me. But then, to convince my parents, I had to do that. But then, fortunately, there was an art critic called Vengata Chalam at that time, who told me that you should go to, go to an art school. And he convinced my parents, you know, please send him to an art school. Chennai is very close by, and Panikar is a very good teacher. That's how I went. But then, today, I'm telling you, I have met some of my classmates in the, when I was studying here in the National College, Bangalore. Some of them I meet. Some of them are retired, chief engineers, bankers, you know, all this. They say, I say, you did a very good thing. You chose whatever you wanted. We just worked for our dal bath, but you worked for something else, you know. And so that, that is the thing. And even in the family, all my cousins, they feel that I did whatever I wanted to. I didn't become a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor, but I wanted to do art. And they respect me a lot now for having taken this and uh, gone about. I think it's, it's important that you convince your parents at some point of time. It, they will get convinced. Yeah. Sometimes it's not what you do to make art, it's what you're willing to give up to be an artist. There is a lot of stability that you give up. There is um, a set role or a set path. There is, um, you give up, uh, uh, when certainly when even you know I entered I decided to take art it was then it, you know it was then truly <laughs> and a position as a woman artist yes I mean just to say that you know I was um, just to give you a background I got a state rank in Tamil Nadu and you know the principal of the school was very pleased and then she said what do you want to do and I said I want to be an artist she called my parents and said you know your daughter's crazy she could become an IAS officer, or an engineer, or a doctor, or a lawyer, and she wants to do art. So yes, it is important to have supportive parents, um, because without them, you know, they said, well, if this is what she wants to do, and you know, then the word passion was not the misused word it is today, where art was not a profession then, and I'm not saying that it's wrong. I mean, it's good to have a, a, a well-developed landscape in which to be an artist, to to be part of an ecosystem of art, it, it does make life easier, a little bit easier, not that much easier. But, you know, if um, you're in there because you think it ticks certain boxes and it's a good profession, you're completely in the wrong field. Because it's, um, there's a lot that you need to give up. And it's, and if you're willing to make that sacrifice, I would say it's only then 
you know, it's worth it to be an artist. You can be lucky, you can be successful, and these are good things. I don't see any great um, virtue in being a starving artist or in being, you know, an artist who's never discovered. These are wonderful things and they should happen to all good artists, but they may not. And if you're willing to, to, to accept that, to accept the things that you will need to give up, it's then worth it being an artist. You are mentioning about the parents' attitude, you know. See, um, I, I have been actually conducting art classes for children for the last 46 years. Uh, actually, it is um, all 99.9% .9 of the children are interested in playing with the colors and their talent. Their talent is uh, suppressed, distort, destroyed, or disturbed by parents, ambience in the house, atmosphere, first teacher in the school, and the bad raw materials, the first day of the world. And this actually disturbs the children. So I blame the parents if they are discouraging, not because they are, because they are not brought up with the interest in art or playing with colors. You know why art is neglected in India? It is because all the politicians and bureaucrats never had a chance to play with colors when they were young. And uh, you know, I'm actually making a passing comment now, after independence, after Maulana Asad and Humayun Kabir, we never had a central minister to encourage culture. You know, India has not built a national level, no museum was built after independence. Okay, that is not a subject you know we are daring, dealing with, so I don't want to go in detail, but just a passing comment. Madras and the Madras uh, artists. Um, is there any particular reason why Bangalore and the NGMA was chosen as a as a venue for this exhibition, which focuses on the Madras art movement? Or am I wrong? Or uh, you know, I just want to know, just out of curiosity. Why it was chosen? Uh, well, should I say it is providential? Uh, actually, the proposal came from Mr. Vasudev, and uh, he said it should be held in a place like NGMA. And I couldn't think of any other place except NGMA in Bangalore because, you know, of its close proximity to Madras. So the proposal was given. It took its time. But today it has materialized, and it has fulfilled many a audience should should know what Madras, uh, you know. Yeah, it might, it might. I'm trying to be positive and negative at the same time. Yes, it might. It will, it's definitely a traveling exhibition to Mumbai and to Delhi, yes. Um, I'm sure you guys have questions, but we're out of time. And um, so I suppose if, if they're around, you can interact with them one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But um, I would personally like to thank everybody for being part of this, for the, for the audience, uh, to listening to us kind of take off on some tangents. But um, I think what is most important uh, about this uh, exhibition, uh, which, which, uh, which is uh, pivotal to this talk, is irrespective of what we've spoken about here, irrespective of what you might have heard today, I think all of you should take the time to come and just see the artwork. Um, it, it's a very important part of, of any art. The artist creates artwork, yes, it could be uh, for themselves, it could be uh, you know, for any other purpose, but end of the day, it's been created as a visual that one should look at. And uh, 
you will respond to it emotionally, some kind of emotion, whether it's uh, happiness or, or sadness or you hate it or don't like it, don't, everything is an emotional response and that's what art does to you. So I would encourage all of you to come back, see the show, take your time. And as uh, was pointed out earlier, I think this has probably the top works of any of these artists that you'll ever see anywhere. And, and yeah. yes, and I will, um, so I'm done. So I will let Ashrafi wrap up. No, it's not a wrapping up, but I just want to tell you that uh, when I did my research, talking to the artist was so exciting. It was uh, a real experience, you know, what they had gone through to achieve what they had. And, you know, when I was given this opportunity, because I thought it would be best to source out all the works from NGMA in Delhi. So, and believe me if I tell you that 80% of the works were in the store. And, you know, every time a work was brought out, you know, my eyes would shine and I say with great excitement, oh, it is Achutan's, oh, it is Haridasan's. I mean, works which I don't think I have seen or anybody has seen. Like, especially Mr. Vasudev's works, I was stunned by its size. I always thought they were small works. And works which I thought were small, you know, turned out to be something else. And vice versa. So, you know, uh, it is really worth a while that it has seen the light of the day in this place. And you know, these I consider great artists who have really worked towards achieving what they have achieved. Eminence is exactly the word I would use. And you know, uh, please uh, uh, spread the word around to, you know, uh, for people to come and have a look at this exhibition. Otherwise it would have remained only in the store for I don't know how many centuries, centuries also. Thank you very much. Um, also, before you all leave, I would really like to thank our artists for coming today. Um, thank you, Ms. Vanilla Jacob, Ms. Priya Nair, Ms. Ashafi Bhagat for helping us as well, last minute though included, uh, Mr. S.G. Vasudev and Mr. Bala Nambiar. And lastly, I'd also like to thank Mr. Ashwin Raja Gopal. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, having us, um, have you all with us, rather. And uh, if also everyone could follow us on Twitter and Facebook for our uh, updates on events that are happening, it would be lovely. We're selling catalogs uh, on the show, Regional Modernity in Art, Madras Art Movement. Um, and we're also having high tea, coffee included. So if y'all need a little pick me up, it's right outside. Thank you.